Hello friends, today we're going to be talking about CSS Shadow Parts, which is an exciting development in styling your web components. Uh, up till now, there hasn't been a solution that's worked. There's been a few attempts at this. Uh, initially, there was the Deep and Shadow selectors. They didn't pan out too well. They were too slow and they allowed you to do too much to the component and you could end up breaking it. So that, that idea failed. Then we looked at custom properties, which wasn't a dedicated solution. Uh, it's just, it just utilized the fact that custom properties can pierce the shadow DOM. Uh, and that looks good, but it ended up just not quite working out. You had to declare too many of these properties. It just got overwhelming. There was an attempt to band-aid that with the at apply. Uh, that didn't work either. Um, so we've ended up now with CSS Shadow Parts, a dedicated solution similar to Deep and Shadow in that you can pierce in and do anything to the element you get, but you can't get any element in the component. You can only get those ones that the component author uh, has allowed you access to. So very excited about this. Uh, let's jump in and have a look at an example. Okay, I've got Visual Studio Code here. Uh, let's create a simple custom element that we can then style using CSS Shadow Parts. I'll speed this bit up because it's just pretty boilerplate. Okay, there we go. I've created a custom element over here uh, that is literally just gonna create some shadow DOM and add this H3 template and display that title. And then over here, we've just got our uh, index HTML, which is importing that custom element script and displaying the custom element here. So nothing out of the ordinary there. Now, let's uh, look at how we will style this. Um, not sure if you're aware, but in case you aren't, you cannot just apply style to a shadow DOM of a custom element. It will not go in there. So let's just show that here briefly. If we could set a style and we set um, H3s to have a background color of orange, this will not get applied to our custom element because it can't get through the shadow DOM. Let me bring this up in live server. One thing to note about shadow parts, it's only in Chrome Canary at the moment. So I'm gonna grab that and open up Chrome Canary for this one. And pop that in there. So we can see our title, it has no styling on the background. Other H3s would get that styling. So let's do a H3 here, test, and you can see over here it's got an orange background. So. How do we get around this? Well, as I say, there's been a few attempts at how to allow this styling, and they've all failed pretty badly. CSS Shadow Parts, this is gonna be the one that works, I'm sure. Um, what do we need to do? Well, on our component, as the component author, we can specify particular elements that we want to expose from our component, and we do that by simply specifying a part and giving it a ID. More of... Um, more of a, a class feeling to this value than an ID. It doesn't need to be unique. So let's just call it title on here. Okay. Okay, just rearrange the uh, formula bits just so we can see it. Hopefully it's not too small. Right, so we've got our part and title here now. Now this means that uh, users of our component can style that part and uh, that part only. I will actually just throw another H3 in here just so we can show that it's not getting styled. Should have a white background. This one should always stay the same because our component author doesn't want it to change because they haven't specified a shadow part on it. Uh, right, let's get rid of test. That's gone. So we just got white backgrounds on all of this now. Just come back in a little bit so we can see it. Okay. If, as the user of this component, you wanted to style it to match the theme of your application, 
you want to be able to say set the background color of it. Now, what can we do? Well, we can say uh, custom element, so we can specify our HTML tag, and then we can use this new selector called part, and in there, we need to specify the name of the part, so title. Um, now, in the documentation, the, the component author for this, this custom element would have to uh, expose in documentation what these names are, and then you can use them accordingly. But once we've got that, we can then target, uh, let's say, background and orange, like so. And there you can see it's working nicely. Our custom element has applied that style. And not only does it apply that style, but it, it hasn't applied it to anything else. You know, it's not applying it to H3s or anything else in there, but only this title. Um, we can do anything we want to that. So we can specify the border, the border radius, the font color, the font size. We can we can style it as we want, but own only that element. And that's where um, the initial shadow and deep selectors gave you too much control. You could get at anything and, and potentially break the component quite easily, and they weren't performant at all. Uh, and then also with custom properties, the problem is rather than just us using which ones we want, the component author would have had to specify all of the properties that could be exposed. And they might not specify them all, and there would just be too many. It was just laborious. Right, so that's that's quite straightforward. Um, and the issue now then, the, ne the next thing to think about is what happens when you've got a component that's using another component? How does that work? So. Let's give that a try here. If I make a copy of this component, and we'll call it our custom element inner. So we're using a component, and that component uses another component, which is pretty standard these days. And then we'll just put in here inner component. We can get rid of that one, this here. OK, now. Uh, let's just get it so that it comes up. Custom element inner and custom element inner. And then we should be able to come in here. And I'll get rid of this thing here and just put our custom element inner here. And we can see over here we've got our inner component. No styling on the background. Right. Now, why is that? That's because when you expose a part, it can only go down one level. So we're not able to get to the inner components. Again, this allows the, the component author to provide the level of access that, that they like. They've got control over it. What they can do is export a parts from an inner component to an outer one. So we can, on our custom element inner, we can actually put a tag exports part and say, right, which one do we want to export? Well, we've got a title as well. So let's export our title. And once we do so, actually export parts, is the syntax, and now it goes orange. Um, and so what it does is it exports a part and, and it makes it um, appear as if that part is on the outer element. So what um, what this is actually doing, the syntax of this is a little more complicated, it's actually title, colon, and then the name of the um, uh, part that you want to name it. So if you did title, title, the shorthand is just title here. Right, let me so let me just move this over so we can see it all a little bit better again. We don't need all of that just now. Just there. Okay. All right, so at the moment we're using the same name, but this might be something else. You know, this component author might have used it as something like my title. Uh, in which case when we expose my title it's not getting uh, styled because we haven't got that. But we can, we can, if we want, 
we can just make a copy of this one here. And because this part it now feels like the outer component, we can just say my title, and we see that we're getting that component styled there as well. Uh, and you can rename it actually. So we could try and make it nice and easy for the um, for the user of the component. So we could say my title goes to title, and then I can get rid of this one completely. And we're just using the title again, and we're getting both of them um, styled. So there's a there's a little bit to get used to to that syntax, but it is quite uh, intuitive once you've played around with it a little bit. And and that's how it works. That's great. Um, it all looks good. Just waiting for the um, the upgrade of Chrome to 73, and this will will, will be uh, available there. It's only available in Chrome at the moment, so can't use it as such just yet. It is a recognized spec though, so the, the other browsers will be implementing this. Just got to hold tight till then. All right, thanks very much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like that one or a thumbs down. Click that subscribe and notify if you want to see the next video. Uh, see you next time. Bye.